Hi, I'm Bob Kenoden. and on this episode of the Camp Chaos Chronicles, I'm going to be showing you how I take these heads and stick them on that engine. After today, it's all about the details. Lots and lots of details. Dang it! Before we go putting heads on, there's a few checks we need to make and a few prep things that need to be done. First thing that I can't stress enough is right here, these three studs on the front of each head that hold the front of the cylinder head down to the front cover. Make sure these things are installed. In fact, it's probably a good idea not to pull them out to begin with because if you put the head on and get it torqued and you haven't put these studs in, if memory serves, you can actually get these two studs in, but you're gonna to have to do a little bit of whittling on the head to get this middle one installed. So make sure that you've got those installed on both sides. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the cylinder liner retainers off of both banks. Now, in the back of the block, we've got the crankshaft stops still installed, so we shouldn't have any issues with these liners coming loose. Next, we're gonna take our time and with a lint-free paper towel, if there is such a thing, we're going to Take a little bit of carb cleaner and we're going to clean down all of the gasket surfaces all the way around the engine and don't spare the carburetor cleaner and when I get done doing that I'm going to do the same thing to the top of the cylinder liners because any oil or other foreign material like Hylomar left over from the cylinder liner process that's stuck to the top of the liner is a potential failure point in the gasket. Doing my final pre-assembly inspections here, I find that I am short a perimeter stud. I can put that in later, but it's uh, much easier to put it in now. Then we perform the same cleaning operation on the cylinder head itself. Another thing we need to do prior to putting the head on is dealing with this gasket right here. Now in some cases the gaskets have shrunk over time to the point where this actually is below the top of the joint between the cylinder head and the front cover. In which case I would have put some right stuff RTV to make up the deficit. And in this case though you can see that the gasket is sticking up quite a ways. Now, what I'm going to do is take a utility knife and cut that off flush, but you want to do it, it's kind of hard to do this with the, yeah, here we go. You want to do it from inside to outside and get it absolutely flush. So you want to use a sharp blade, and there we go. Now, the reason you don't go from the outside in is so that when you get to the end here, it could pop loose and jump in the engine and you want to avoid that. So if we feel across the top here, we can see that it's perfectly flush. Now the manufacturer of the gaskets, and in fact I think all gasket manufacturers recommend that you not use any sealer on the surface between the cylinder head, the block, and the head gasket. 
The exception that I would make would be right here, particularly in the case where the gasket didn't come up all the way. What I will do is I'll take about an eighth of an inch thin film of right stuff, RTV, and put it over that joint. And I do that to make sure that there's not a leak between the head and the front cover on the block at that point. Particularly important if you had to put a new front cover on because there's a, just a few thousandths of an inch difference in, in terms of the, the surface between these two parts. And the reason that you would do that is that I had an engine one time, really nice block, but they had taken, in order to get the front cover off, they had uh, savaged the front cover where the studs go through and they were corroded and they were basically locked on the engine and they chopped it up real bad. And one of the worst cases of barbarianism I've seen that gets perpetrated on these engines over time. So anyway, I think it's a good idea and I don't think it hurts anything. It's not like it's this joint between the, the uh, cylinder head and the, the, um, the top of the cylinder liner. Okay, moving on. Well, well, next is we'll inspect our cylinder head gaskets. Uh, if they came to you in a complete set, wrapped in clear plastic, shrink wrap, then they're probably usable right out of the pack. But still, it's a good idea to look them over. If they came to you loose in a box because somebody bought a complete set and just took the gaskets out they needed it and decided to sell the rest of the set, including the head gaskets to you online, you want to take a look at them. First of all, what you don't want to see is a tremendous amount on the front of the cylinder head gasket, a tremendous amount of delamination. You can see that it's starting to happen uh, on the front end here. Uh, this is where the timing chain goes through. Uh, this isn't bad. This will work just fine. Some of these that I've gotten have just been really dinged up in the front. Not that I've had a real problem with that, but I wouldn't put them on a client's engine. Um, another thing you want to do if it's come to you out of the, the shrink wrap package is check for foreign material because this surface that you see right here is sticky. It's the sealer that they want to be used to seal between the head and the block. And, uh, and so it does tend to get a, get a bit of debris accumulated on it. Uh, these aren't bad. Here you go. This stuff right here right on the fire ring. Now you don't want to scratch at it too much. That's not going to come off. I don't want to damage that sealing service. So anyway, this looks like a pretty good gasket. Now another thing you want to look for is, let's see right here, it says top. This means that this, is, this needs to go out toward you when you put the gasket on. So this looks like it's ready to go on. And remember, there is an A side and a B side. This is the B side. And you may have to flex the studs around a little bit in order to Get the gaskets to go on. At this point, we can time the camshafts in order to make sure that when we bolt these cylinder heads down to the engine that we don't have an open valve that comes into contact with a piston that's a top dead center and at the very least causes us to have to take it off again. 
if not actually bend something. So it's kind of an important step. And if you look closely here, you can see that there is a notch in this hub of the camshaft. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use this tool that has three surfaces here. One there and one there. That's the surface of the, the gasket surface on the top of the cam box. Uh, you got one of those on both sides, so this needs to fit down tight against those places with this tooth right here fitting into that notch in the top of the camshaft hub. So what we're going to do is take a couple of those the camshaft uh, timing gear bolts, put them in, and then just rotate this around, and that's too far, and get that notch straight up, and we put the gauge in. Kind of got lucky there right off the bat. Yeah. Should have left well enough alone. Although this is a good example. If you can get the uh, that tab in that notch and you get it to fit down on one side, but you can see you got about a sixteenth of an inch between the flange here and the bottom of this tool, we got to move it back just a little bit. And there we go. It's fitting down tight against the cam box flange and that little tab fits perfectly in there. And now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing over here. 